Every class in League suffers from an internal conflict of sorts. I made an episode on each of the seven last year as well as additional ones going into one of their subcategories in more detail. Historically, each class has had their moment of glory at one point or another, some more than once, but there were also times where they were on neutral or amicable terms with the player base. While public enemy number one for the past two years has been the ever-growing Slayer class and its two branches Assassins and Skirmishers, one that has almost never been respected very much, no matter how strong or weak at the time, are the Enchanters. Twitter politics aside, I don't think I've ever met a person who didn't hold some semblance of a grudge against the Enchanters, or at the very least, a member of it. Throughout League's lifespan, they've been ridiculed for a lot of different things. When they're underperforming, everyone calls them troll picks that can't do anything, and when they're strong, everyone downplays the success of those who play them by saying they take no skill or are brain dead easy. I'm not gonna lie, I'm one of those people from time to time. But on the other end, Enchanter mains often voice how helpless they feel when the situation goes south, that victory or defeat is at the mercy of their AD carry and by extension the rest of their team. You know what? I think it's worth revisiting the controller class in order to settle that debate. Who is in the right? Are they as brain dead easy as everyone likes to complain about, or does playing them well take a lot more aptitude and skill than people give them credit for? Today, we're gonna find out if Enchanters are the easiest or the hardest class to play. It's been a while since my video on controllers almost a year ago, so for the sake of continuity, let's recap on what Enchanters are all about. Although I'm sure they need no introduction. Enchanters are part of the controller class, the majority of us call them supports. They're capable of massively amplifying their teammates pressure to become the strongest class in group combat, supplying crucial utility or crowd control at clutch moments to save allies from death and set up takedowns on the enemy team. They usually pair up with the marksman class, supplementing their vulnerable early game so that they can safely transition out of laning phase. Over time though, their assistance extends to the rest of their team, and their valuable tools remain consistently useful despite less access to resources like gold and experience. The Enchanter subclass comprises any champion whose primary objective is to augment their team's combat pressure either through power enhancement or damage deterrence. In exchange for their wide array of supportive aid, Enchanters depend on their teammates to shield them from enemy threats as they have virtually no defense or fighting strength of their own. Typically, they come armed with an assortment of things like shields, heals, temporary stat boosters, or disengage and or lockdown crowd control. On occasion, they might have one or two damaging abilities as well. In MMOs, there exists the trinity of tank, DPS, and support, a concept I've brought up many times before. While all three are necessary for the success and survival of a party, I personally believe the support carries the heaviest burden since they're the difference maker between life and death for their team. And you can find an example of this in any game with a class-based system. Most veteran gamers worth their salt acknowledge and appreciate the vital role supports play no matter what the genre, and their influence is the same effect in League, even if players don't want to admit it. Every single one of you watching this video can remember multiple instances where you were this close to getting one-shotted only for your enchanter support to save your life at the last second. Vice versa, everyone remembers a moment where they caught out a seemingly isolated enemy champion only for their support to come out of the brush and rescue them from almost certain death. It's a known fact that enchanters possess a lot of agency in a fight. I'd go so far as to say victory hinges on who they support, when they support, and how they support. But regardless of the validity of their existence, the never-ending arguments regarding enchanters will most likely never stop. And there will always be players who defend the class by saying just because they don't have flashy combos doesn't mean they're not hard to play. So what I want to do is go over the key points on both sides to elucidate where they're coming from. First, we're going to start with the side against enchanters before going over to the side in favor of them, and I have three points for both. The biggest argument condemning enchanters is how they diminish or outright remove the consequences of their team's mistakes. Oftentimes, what have otherwise been a deserved kill is made not so because of enchanters. For example, if one of Lulu's teammates accidentally face checks a brush, she can bail them out with their speed up or polymorph, shield, and wild growth, offering just enough of a buffer for them to withstand the element of surprise and get out safely. No matter your stance on the subject, this is a valid point. I always call out 200 years champs for being able to fight their way through any situation that others are not able to. For example, if your team manages to snuff out Gwen in the late game, she can simply use Hollowed Mist which forces you to get within striking distance of her, undermining the weakness of skirmishers being ranged damage. The entire point of an enchanter is to increase the offense and defensive capabilities of their teammates. Heals like Soraka's Wish or shields like Karma's Defiance provide their team with more effective health, making them harder to burst down and thus giving them more time to react to the situation and decide what to do next. Buffs like Renata's Bailout or Lulu's Whimsy can artificially increase the threat capacity of their carries to the point where even if they're behind, they can become a dangerous adversary. Protective crowd control like Janna's Howling Gale or Nami's Tidal Wave make usually easy targets very difficult to engage on. In essence, enchanters invalidate a ton of problems with the press of a few buttons that no other class can come close to. They're able to bolster a feeding teammate enough to turn them into a fed one, even if only for a brief moment, but that brief moment might be all they need. 
Conversely, they can make a fed teammate so much stronger that they can be as reckless as they want with impunity. An extreme example of this is Yumi or Lulu who can funnel their strength into a carry and transform them into a 1v9 raid boss. They were already tough enough to handle on their own, but with the backing of an enchanter, they may as well be invincible. League of Legends is a game of consequences. Games are won and lost over the consequences of one or two key mistakes, like overstaying and getting aced and losing Baron, or chasing after a low health opponent only to get baited into an ambush, face checking brushes, etc. Enchanters by nature lessen those consequences. The second point against enchanters is that they tend to achieve way too much relative to the amount of commitment it takes, or in layman's terms, their low risk, high reward. This one heavily depends on context. While it's true that in a lot of cases they effectively cancel out a lot of mistakes that their teammates make, it usually happens at their expense. That is, their support sacrificing themselves for the ADC or whoever's dumbass gets caught. However, at times one can argue that the risk to reward ratio can be skewed way too heavily in favor of reward. For one, enchanters aren't as reliant on items and levels to do their job, and the output of said job is greater than what would otherwise take a lot more effort or execution for other champions or in other circumstances. That's because enchanter abilities are extremely gold efficient. The sheer amount of stats they can provide to an ally are disproportionately higher than your average level to level increases. To elaborate, let's use the concept of shields. Say you're playing Karma and you use a rank 5 Inspire on someone. They get a base shield of 240 plus 45% AP and assuming you have, I don't know, 200 AP for the sake of argument, that brings it to 330. One point of health is 2.67 gold. So that means a shield of 330 is the equivalent of giving herself or an ally champion almost 900 gold in effective health. And the number climbs higher as she gets more ability power and more heal and shield bonus. While this is taking place, whoever she's shielding is also getting stronger as time goes on. The idea is that shields and buffs provide an enormous boost in combat pressure at the cost of duration. You only get it for a few seconds at most. But considering how most skirmishes last only a few seconds, that's not exactly a con. Last point against enchanters is that their vulnerability is usually cancelled out by how low priority they are. It's a dilemma as old as time. When engaging on an ADC, do you go after them first or the support next to them? Common sense dictates you should go after the support, right? A typical strategy used in warfare is to attack the supply chain of your enemy, since as long as they have supplies, they can keep fighting. Normally, that would be the right call, but that only really applies to protracted conflicts like, you know, war. League is a game, and as mentioned before, fights are very short these days, even with the durability update. If you expend resources going after the enchanter, they'll probably press all their buttons at once on their nearest teammate, who will then open fire on you while your abilities are on cooldown. Yes, you took out their supply chain, but they're gonna take out your goddamn life in return. However, if you went after the ADC first, or whoever the enchanter is backing up, if you manage to take them down, the enchanter is dessert since they pose no threat on their own. Basically, the idea that enchanters have to be in the kill box with their carries to be useful is not as big of a weakness as one would think because the people they're standing next to are likely more dangerous than the amount of support the enchanters give to them. Yet the support cannot be ignored either, going back to the whole risk and reward ratio. So those are the three points arguing against enchanters and why they're easy to play. Now let's talk about the points arguing why enchanters are hard to play. If you think about it, in theory, trying to climb solo queue using only enchanters is extremely difficult to pull off. Reason being, you're pretty much gambling on the rest of your team to take your investment and put it to good use. Enchanters have zero carry potential of their own, they can only carry by enabling their teammates to carry. Solo Q's challenger ladder is filled to the brim with 1v9 solo carry champions like Fiora, Graves, Camille, Gangplank, Rengar, Talon, Kai'Sa, Nidalee to name a few, since very few, if any of them, are willing to trust someone they don't know with their own pressure. Imagine this, at the start of a game, each player opens with 20% pressure, so 100% on both sides. Anytime you score a kill or get an objective, pressure is taken away from the enemy side and added to yours and vice versa. What enchanters basically do is give up their own 20% and distribute it to their team. I mean, that's Yumi's entire existence in a nutshell, she gives her 20% to someone else. Now, as the match progresses, the enchanter still gains and loses pressure based on whoever they're supporting. If Janna supports her Jax top, for instance, and with her assistance he gets a triple kill, not only does Jax's 20% increase tremendously thanks to her, but she gets a return on investment, so her 20% increases as well. She can then take that 22, 23, whatever percent, and either go full Wall Street bets and hold all until it goes to the moon, or take it out and invest it in something else. For example, with her profits, she can assist one of her teammates who dropped to like 17% and help them get back into the game, or she can use it to get someone else ahead. Does that make sense? When you play as an enchanter, you need to have a firm grasp on how to best allocate your 20% pressure in a match. Do you want to funnel it all into one person, or diversify and help everyone out by spreading it across evenly? And just like the stock market in real life, trying to do that consistently over the course of hundreds of games is almost impossible. There are very few solo enchanter players in Challenger. Why? Because it's far easier to play solo 1v9 champs as the only thing you have to think about is what you can or can't do, not the rest of your team. 
So detractors of Enchanter supports might think I'm giving them too much credit, but I'm not. If you've been playing the game for a long time, you can tell the difference between a Lulu who AFKs behind her ADC all game and a Lulu who Uno reverse cards everything the enemy team tries to do. In fact, if all you're doing is hoping for your team to carry you, you're not doing your job right. This happens not just from a macro level, but also a micro level. Contrary to popular belief, there's only so much an enchanter can do at any given time. More often than not, they're only able to protect one or two people during a teamfight, and they have to make it count. Do you shield your Hecarim diving in so he doesn't get one-shotted, or do you save it for your Jinx who's about to get wasted by Talon? I concede that mechanically playing an enchanter is not that hard. But those subtle split-second decisions, while unnoticed by a lot of players, make all the difference in a fight. Who to shield, when to shield, who to peel, when to peel, who to exhaust, who to ignite, when to do it. There are so many things an enchanter has to decide between doing, and having not only the game sense to know what the best option is, but also the adaptability to change your avenue of approach based on circumstance is something most top jungle mid and ADC players don't even have to think about, because the enchanters are thinking about it for you. It's true that they pay for their teammates' mistakes, but that doesn't mean it's no skin off their backs. Someone has to foot the bill. You might say that applies to all supports, not just enchanters. I disagree. Tank or engaged supports like Nautilus, Leona, and Alistar don't have to micromanage as many things as a Lulu, Renata, or dare I say Yumi. They just have to find someone, check their map to see if their team can follow up, and then engage. And no, I'm not held hostage by Yumi mains this time. Credit where credit is due, as much as the words burn my tongue to say them, Yumi takes some degree of skill to play well, that is, unless it's a 1v9 duo jungler like Kane or something. Lastly, enchanters are inherently in more danger when it comes to doing basic support tasks like vision control. That's because they themselves don't pose a threat to the enemy team. If you're walking through the jungle and you spot a Nami, you don't go, oh sh**, because what the hell is Nami gonna do to you? Nothing. Even if you see her with her ADC or someone else, if that someone else doesn't have the means to gap closed on you, it's not much of a problem. Could the same be said if Nami wasn't steady Blitzcrank or Nautilus, now you have more cause for concern. Sure, if they're on their own, they're no less or more of a threat than a Sona or Soraka, but if there's someone next to them with a lot of damage, you have to put some distance between you and them quickly. In other words, enchanters are more likely to be engaged on than tanks, which demands that they exercise more caution when establishing vision control and other things. So while they may not be as do or die as other supports in teamfights, seeing as they don't have to go smack dab into the middle of the enemy team, in the neutral game, they're much easier targets for assassins and the like. So, now to answer the question, are enchanters brain dead easy or actually skill expressive? The answer? It depends. Just kidding, I'm not going to be offensive for this one. I for one believe that enchanters deserve more respect for what they bring to the table. Not that they're faultless, but I think it's kind of silly how much people discount the importances of enchanters and the challenges they face in League when they take them for granted. They're a lot harder to play than you think. It's not as simple as just pressing shield on your ADC and calling it a day. By that logic, all you have to do as a jungler is gang lanes. All you have to do as an ADC is shoot whatever moves. All you have to do as a top laner is pray you don't get camped. You can't generalize a class like that. League is not that simple. Okay, so that's gonna be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you have, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server, and check out my other class discussion videos if you haven't yet. But until next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.